Okay, so in conclusion, I want to talk about a few more things about PD Player. Um, you've sort of seen a few things. It basically does is a RAM player. It's very intuitive and works in very obvious ways that allow the most basic users to use it and start to grow with the program as it allows as opens up more possibilities to what it's able to do. Um, you've also seen how it can do some compositing and does some layers and does some editing and can export out the data for you and export out the data as a, uh, a finished product like a QuickTime or even composite it in Nuke or um, After Effects or even just save yourself out your own little uh, PD player um, comp. It also uh, is a great presentation tool. It's able to, to do nice full screen stuff. It's able to export stuff over HTTP and do a lot of other things. But to be honest, that only really scratches the surface of all the things you're able to do with PD Player because it really can become an exclusive uh, or really strong pipeline tool in general for you to be able to use. Uh, and I'm going to talk about that briefly because um, this is something to be to be uh, heard and, and talked about. And to be honest, if I really was to go into every detail of what all the possibilities that you can do in PD Player, this presentation would be too long. But this should give you a good idea of, of how you can start to diversify all the different things that PD Player can do and really sort of enter into your pipeline in a, as a, a very versatile tool. Um, if you go into the Program Files PD Player list here, you'll notice a few things that are available to you. One is the key definitions. First of all, uh, most of the things I've been showing you, is a few, uh, I've shown a few keystrokes here and there, but really you can redefine all of the keys uh, that are done in PD Player for different things like playing backwards, playing forwards, etc., uh, RGB channels, etc. So all of those things you can redefine, which is a kind of a good way of working. So that way you can become faster and customize the interface that you want in PD Player. Um, the next thing that really is interesting is this thing, is PD Player command line text. This sort of outlines a series of text uh, items that you can do in PD Player in order to um, allow PD Player to work completely command line. Um, you can launch PD Player, you can do an uh, enormous amount of things. Pretty much anything you can do inside of PD Player, you can do uh, as a command line option. So wh what you can do is you can basically automate a series of tasks that you'd like to do, let's say adding gamma or whatever you want to do, and just make that a series of tasks that you'd like to be able to continue to uh, to launch PD Player with. Uh, that is a really useful thing to do because what you can do is now you can set it up to render on the farm. You can make it auto composite elements for you and put that on the farm and then output a quick time. All of those things are possible uh, through the command line, including just sort of if you have a series of commands you'd like to use constantly, uh, you can basically, basically save those out as a text file and you can execute that and then uh, launch PD Player. So a very, very useful thing to have. Really great to be able to implement this into your system and be able to make PD Player sort of an all-around tool uh, from soup to nuts all the way through the uh, uh, pipeline assimilation of your clips. All right. I uh, hope you uh, like this um, presentation of PD Player and are able to uh, appreciate all the wonderful things that it has to offer. Um, uh, it is a, a really good tool and uh, in, in, this, in its simplicity and its complexity at the same time. Uh, and thank you very much for your time.